and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Henry Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use a neat algorithm in order to evolve a neural network and I'm going to tell you what this neural network is but essentially it's a knock gate. I'll expand on that a bit later but let's get into it. So first of all I'm very excited to get into what this is uh, because this is a very, very interesting topic. But just before I begin, I'd like to say that if you've already seen my neural networks and genetic algorithms video, those are very helpful. So I'd recommend you check those out uh, before you start this video. Uh, and also the links to those will be in the description. Anyway though, continuing. So in this video, I'm going to be implementing an algorithm called Neuroevolution of Augmented Topologies, uh, which is essentially a neat algorithm. And what this means is it's essentially a combination of neural networks and genetic algorithms. This means that you'll be able to use genetic algorithms to evolve neural networks. Sounds very interesting, doesn't it? And it is. Uh, so. Let's begin and jump right into it. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, let's say you have a standard neural network and you're using backpropagation to train it. Okay, uh, so let's just say you gave it input like 11010. Okay, and you wanted to get the output as 00101. Exact inversion, or as a it'll uh, exact inversion of the input, uh, and the network should act as a not gate. How would we do this? Well, essentially, of course, you give it a lot of examples, and you would then put these, you know, through the neural network, back propagate, back propagate, back propagate for hours, for a long, long time, until it was eventually done training and reached a, suffi a sufficiently low error rate. But that's kind of tedious, and it's not fun, honestly. It is fun, it is not as fun as the method I'm about to introduce. So today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be introducing a genetic algorithm into this mix in order to evolve a neural network that can act as a NOT gate with a genetic algorithm. So, let's begin. How are we going to do this? Well, essentially the plan is that uh, we can go online, uh, and first of all, this is built in Python using the neat Python library. Uh, and so, of course, that's actually, called, that's actually a library um, created by code reclaimers. Uh, and so they've created a library called neat Python, which allows you to essentially use genetic algorithms to evolve neural networks. So, continuing though, so our plan is, what we're going to do, is we're going to use an online combination generator. What this will do is let's say we give it the inputs 1 and 0. Using these inputs, it'll be able to generate all combinations of this with five digits, such as 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay? It'll also create 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. It'll also create 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay? And it'll create like hundreds of these combinations, every single combination of 1 and 0 together with five digits. Okay, so after that what it's going to do is once it's generated all of these, it's going to format it as an array, okay? So it'll actually be like, of course, the array starting bracket and then the commas in between and then close it. Uh, and that'll become for each and every one of our uh, examples. And of course there would actually be like hundreds of these. And so there are hundreds of these arrays. And we're going to put this into one big multi-dimensional array. And so what this will allow us to do is this will act as our inputs. Next, we're going to create another big multidimensional array with exact opposites, which essentially act as the outputs that we want our neural network to give us. Uh, now I'm just going to create two of these just for the sake of simplicity. But um, essentially, if I show you here, so one last. And so what's going to happen is we are essentially creating uh, the we're creating the inputs and the outputs for the neural network. Now, of course, as I said, these will be many inputs and outputs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first three inputs and outputs and remove them from the training set, okay? And I'm going to remove them from the training set. And I'm going to train the neural network using this genetic algorithm on these other hundreds of inputs that are there. So like if I just do dot, 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 there are many other inputs and outputs. So those will keep going on, but I'm removing the first three. And so once the genetic algorithm has evolved to a state where it can act as a NOT gate at a sufficiently low error rate, and this should be done within like 20 seconds, 
Then it's going to use these first three that we removed and test the neural network if it can reply with good responses. If it can, then that means that even when it was introduced to something it had never seen before, it was able to give correct outputs because it was actually acting as a not gate and not just, you know, hard coded to be, okay, so if it's this, this, and this, and this, you're going to reply this, this, and this, and this. Okay, which actually that's what I see in most people's demo, uh, which is they're feeding it all of the input data, uh, which is something that I don't like to do because I like to see that, okay, I'm only feeding it this input data, but when I get my final neural network, I'm able to test it out with some data that's different and see whether or not it actually worked. And that's essentially what we will be doing today. Uh, so now, again, uh, we're going to be using this uh, in Python, and that's it for now. So. Uh, again, created by Code Reclaimers, a great library. A link to that will be on the description. In fact, another very neat thing that they've implemented with their tool is that they, they using the Visualize library for Python, you can actually uh, essentially create these really neat diagrams of neural networks themselves that power these NOT gates. Uh, and so, if you see right now on the screen, magically, uh, you can see an actual neural network diagram uh, of uh, how this current NOT gate uh, neural network works. Uh, and so, uh, of course, the dimmer lines are less weighted connections between neurons, and the thicker lines are more weighted connections between neurons. And on the top, as you can see, you should be able to see 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 neurons, which are the five input neurons. And at the very bottom, you should see outputs for uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Those are the output neurons. Uh, and so, now the neural network diagram is off the screen, and so that's what we're going to be implementing in Python today. But anyway, I'm very excited for the Mac part now, so let's switch right over to the Mac part. Let's get over there, shall we? So, welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to be showing you how you can actually implement the neat algorithm into your Python scripts in order to implement evolutionary neural networks into your applications. So, let's begin, shall we? So, to begin, in terms of data, how are we going to produce the data for this neural network, uh, or technically to test this neural network with? Well, uh, actually I'm using this text mechanic website, uh, which I will leave a description to down, uh, sorry, a link to down in the description. And so essentially in the input box, you input zero and one, uh, and we want combinations of five. We want five in each uh, sort of uh, list uh, in order to, we want five inputs to, into the neural network and five uh, outputs to the neural network. Uh, and once that's done, uh, once we have that, so it'll, it's actually telling us though that we're going to produce 32 sets, uh, and of course we yes want to repeat objects. Uh, we're going to prefix these sets with an opening square bracket over here, and we're going to suffix them uh, with a closing square bracket. We're going to delimit them, uh, each object with a comma, and we're going to join each set with a comma as well. Now what this is going to allow us to do is essentially watch this. Right as I click generate combinations, as you can see, it creates this huge array of uh, five digits, uh, of course, uh, repeated um, the strings of, uh, or sorry, arrays of ones and zeros. Now, watch this. You see the first two over here are zero, 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 all zeros, and zero, 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 one. Watch this. If I, instead of doing zero, one, I do one, zero in the input, it becomes exactly the opposite, one, 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 and one, 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 zero. And so what this allows us to do is, first of all, let's just say, say we take this and we put this into our inputs, uh, and so as you can see, I'm going to copy this, uh, and if I nano my script here, you can see I've already put in these inputs. Uh, then I just need to, uh, of course, put the exact opposite, zero, one, generate combinations, and use these as the outputs because they're exactly the opposite, as you can see here. One, one, zero, one, one, and the output is zero, zero, one, zero, zero. So that becomes very, very convenient. But then again, as I said, I've taken the first four in that uh, training set, and I've put them into this new test uh, set that I've created. Uh, and so, of course, this uh, says that, okay, all ones becomes all zeros, but then the first four, one, and then a zero becomes 
first four zeros and then a one. Uh, and as you can see, this is exactly what the outputs are. Uh, and this is sort of the training function where we evaluate the fitness over here uh, of each individual. And so essentially what's happening uh, is in this uh, sort of, it's, as I said, a genetic algorithm. And so each neural network is an individual in a population. Uh, and throughout each generation, the population is 150 individuals. And so each individual has their own neural network that's, uh, that can be modified in any way or can be bred with other neural networks in order to create like a crossover network, just like it happens with, I mean, literally humans. Uh, and so uh, what can happen is we can generate these very complex neural networks uh, in only a few generations. Uh, for example, this neural network will take a very long time to train via back propagation or a similar neural network training method, but with a genetic algorithm and with this neat sort of implementation, uh, we're able to do this within like 20 seconds because, of course, it's just that fast and it allows us to, of course, test many neural networks at the same time. And, of course, what we can also do is uh, we can only extract the good traits of two neural networks and breed those together to create a better neural neural network with a better fitness. Uh, but anyway, not going to bore you with any more that. Uh, so once each individual has been checked for, you know, their fitness throughout each generation, uh, some will get bred with others, some will get mutated in their genes, some, you know, will just not be in the next generation, etc, etc. Some new ones will be generated, for example. Uh, and we're setting a limit to 400 uh, generations for this project as well. So next, uh, of course, out here, over here, as you can see, uh, in that once we have our output, uh, I am running a test script. And so what's going to happen is we are essentially uh, running through this, these test arrays that I created. And so what we're doing is we're getting the output, we're running the input through the neural network and getting the output into this variable. Then I'm printing out that these were the inputs that we gave the neural network. And this is the expected output. And then this is the actual neural network's output. And so this would essentially be able to print out exactly uh, what uh, the neural network returned and what was expected of it and what uh, was essentially given to the neural network. But now, let me actually show you a demo of this in action. So now, as you can see, if I run this Python script here, What's happening now is it's running through many, many generations. In fact, if I stop here, as you can see, it's already gotten to generation 24, uh, and the average fitness is negative 28. Uh, and so the best fitness until now is negative 20. Uh, and of course, the species ID, the spawn amount, species fitness, uh, generation time, it, is, it gives you all this information. And if I scroll down here, it's still going through generations. Uh, and currently, it's uh, near 100. Yes, it's gone through the 100th generation. Uh, and of course, in each generation, we have 150 individuals. And so what we're doing is we are selecting the best ones out of them. Uh, and as you can see, uh, after Let's see here, uh, I believe, uh, yes, after 125 generations, we have most probably gotten a good neural network. Let's try it out. So, as you can see, we gave the network 11111. We expected from the network 00000, and as you can see, it was able to deliver 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, I know these numbers don't look like 0, but this is actually scientific notation for a very, very small number. Okay, now the next one, one 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 zero. Let's try this. So the expected value was zero 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 one. Okay, now let's see here. So zero, 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 and one. As you can see, it's 98, which would round to a 1. Uh, and of course, another thing is that the reason it's not able to actually get to 0 is because, of course, well, I mean, a neural network cannot mathematically get to zero because uh, if you think about it with division and multiplication, you can't really get to a zero. Even if you were to like divide a number infinitely by two and you were to keep having it, you would always get a smaller and smaller number infinitely. You would just never get zero. That's impossible. Uh, and so, continuing though, enough about that uh, mathematical stuff. So, continuing. So, next, we gave the network 11101. We expected 0010. Let's see what the network gave us. 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0. As you can see, the network was able to give us that correct output. Next, another one. The inputs we gave 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. We expected from the network 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And the neural network gave us 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 
And that is how a neat algorithm can be implemented to actually uh, sort of, uh, or actually, uh, it can, uh, as, I, as I was saying though, it can be implemented to create a NOT gate, or simulate a NOT gate, or approximate a NOT gate. Uh, and so, now, another thing though, before I continue, uh, so now, this program is also able to generate very neat visualizations of the neural network itself, as you saw during my whiteboard part. Now, uh, if I actually run that visualize Python script, what's going to happen is it's generated, generated an SVG file of uh, that, uh, if I open that up here, it's, op it's created a CSV, it's created a uh, SVG file, one of those vector graphic files, of uh, the image. So if I go here, uh, of the neural network, sorry, so if I go here, this is the neural network in its entirety. Uh, I can actually open this up with Google Chrome and you'll be able to see it much better. And so as you can see, this is a visualization of our new neural network. Uh, and so as you can see here, these gray boxes indicate input neurons, uh, where we have, okay, so we have the zeroth input neuron, the first input neuron, second, third, and fourth. These are five input neurons for the five bits that we're giving it. Then we also have the fifth input and output neuron, sorry, these blue ones are output neurons, and so we have the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth over here, and the ninth. What this allows us to do is essentially see how all these connections are forming uh, and uh, essentially how the neural network is able to work to achieve the result. Now, of course, this isn't your average feed-forward neural network. This is actually a special type of, not special necessarily, it's still a feed-forward, but uh, it's essentially, you know, some neurons are connected to others, some have multiple connections, some have, some have none, no connections, uh, and it's actually quite interesting to see uh, what interesting, uh, what uh, sort of nice shapes uh, it can generate and what types of connections it can make to give you your correct output. And of course, if you were to change the config files to add more or less uh, uh, processing neurons or hidden neurons, uh, and of course more or less uh, like fitness threshold, for example, if you want it to be accurate to the very point, uh, you can change that in the config uh, and, uh, and of course you can get a, a results that you'd like to achieve. Uh, but of course, that's going to be it for this video. Now I know that didn't seem like much, but this was a demo of how you can actually use neat algorithms to, uh, of course, evolve neural networks. But now I'd like to say that in the next part of this video, you'll be seeing a lot more, including an in-depth explanation of how this works in its entirety. And of course, again, a big shout out to Code Reclaimers for making this amazing Python library uh, for uh, implementing neat algorithms with Python. I actually haven't seen many neat algorithms implemented uh, in really any language. Uh, there, are, there are, I think, two in Java, two in Python, uh, and a few in C and C++, but not much apart from that. Uh, and so, of course, uh, I am very excited to to start implementing these uh, and you will be seeing a lot more soon but that's not that's going to have to be kept a surprise for now anyway though i hope you enjoyed if you did please do leave a like down below if you really like my content though and you want to see more of it please do consider subscribing to my youtube channel as it really does help out a lot uh, and of course if you think this video could help anybody else uh, that you know please consider sharing the video as well but if you have any suggestions comments or reviews uh, or even questions you can leave them down in the comment section below uh, or you could email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet them to me at tajimani uh, and of course, my contact information will be in the description as well. And in the more detailed explanation, you'll be getting the source code for this as well. Or, you know what, just in this video, in the description, you'll be able to see the source code of this neat implementation. Anyway, though, thank you very much. That's going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Goodbye.